What's up everyone? I'm back with the second part of Rage Inducing Rivers. At this point in the session, it is absolute chaos. The pots are massive. The pain is real. I end up playing one of the biggest pots of my life to end the session, and I hope that you guys enjoy. In this hand, we see an early position limp from the Dock of Felt. The golfer in the small blind bumps it up to $75. I look down at 8-5 of diamonds in the big blind. I think this is a hand that I'm gonna be pretty much peer continuing here. Don't expect the Dock of Felt to three bet very often, but I do expect him to be calling once he's limped. So I'm getting a very good price here with a hand that plays relatively well multi-way. I make the call and as expected, the Dock of Felt also makes the call. And we go three ways to the flop with the pot at $245. The flop is the five of hearts, nine of diamonds, three of diamonds, giving me middle pair and the flush draw. The golfer leads out here for $100. I think my hand can play as either a raise or a call. I have a ton of equity versus any of my opponent's hands. Generally, I'm gonna be playing a pair plus a flush draw more often as a call, but it's not too horrendous of a spot if I decide to raise and he continues or re-raises over the top. If he has a hand like an over pair, I have two pair, trip, and flush draw outs. And if he has a hand like a flush draw, I'm ahead of that with my pair and blocking his flush from coming in. I decide to make the call here and the Dock of Felt thinks for a little bit and he decides to raise here to $400. I think that he has some nut flush draws here, some combo draws, maybe something like 6-7 which is a double gutter. As far as value, it's pretty much going to be some sets and I think he specifically has two pair here. 5-3 is his favorite hand so he's going to have a two pair combo here at a very high frequency, even offsuit combos that other players wouldn't have. The golfer thinks for a little bit and he makes the fold. And again, I think my hand can play either way. Facing raise aggression, I think I generally just wanna be calling here and I'm gonna be calling most turn cards. So I will be pretty much always seeing a river. We go to the turn with the pot at $1,145. The turn is the four of hearts, essentially a blank unless my opponent has exactly something like seven, six suited. I check and unfortunately my opponent decides to go all in for three X pot. I was expecting to pretty much call here every time and see a river and see if I improve to two pair trips or a flush. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm getting the right price at this point. Pretty unfortunate. I'm not entirely sure what he's shoving here for this sizing. If he has a flush draw, then good for him. I block some of the combo draws and against the made hands, I just don't have quite enough equity to continue. I end up folding here and he shows us the 5-3 suited that he limp called preflop and flops two pair. Pretty scary turn and he really just didn't want to see a river so good for him. He pushed me off of a hand that had a ton of equity and he scoops this pot. This hand's a little bit wonky. We see an early position limp followed by a middle position small blind and big blind limp. I have ace deuce offsuit in the straddle and getting this absolutely wonderful price I decide to check back. We go five ways to the flop which is the queen of spades, six of spades, two of spades giving me the nut flush draw and bottom pair. Small blind checks and the big blind decides to lead out for half pot. Again similar to the eight five of diamonds that I previously played having a pair and a flush draw I think my hand can play as either a raise or a call. This specific hand I think plays quite a bit better as a raise as I have a much stronger flush draw being the nut flush draw and my bottom pair gains a lot more value from denial here than it did in the previous hand especially when we are five ways to this flop. Pushing out any equity which is all of the over cards is pretty wonderful for my hand and I also have a ton of equity in myself. I bump it up to $200. Both the early position and middle position players fold and the small blind decides to call. Quite a strong call by the small blind here with a player behind facing a bet and a raise. I expect my opponent to have quite a bit of queen x here, especially if they have a spade. So something like king queen or queen jack with the spade. I think they'll have some pocket sixes, possibly the last combo of pocket twos, and he could just have something like a naked king or jack of spades that I don't think wants to fold when we are this deep. I think it's also perfectly reasonable that he has a made flush draw here, and he either has a very strong flush draw and wants me to catch up, or he has a weak flush draw and doesn't really want to necessarily put a ton of money in the pot. The big blind player folds and we go heads up to the turn with the pot at $550. The turn is the three of hearts. 
Really shouldn't change much at all unless my opponent has something like 5-4 offsuit with the spade draw, but I think that's very unlikely to float on the flop. He checks and I decide to barrel here for just over half pot, betting $350. He thinks for a little bit and makes the call. I think he has a pretty similar range at this point. Maybe some of his weaker flush draws are gonna be folding. So if he has something like just the 10 of spades, I think if he continued with any 6x for whatever reason, he's gonna be folding as well as some of his weaker queen x. I would still expect some of the stronger queens like king queen, queen jack to be continuing. I'm not sure how many ace queens he has as he didn't raise preflop. The river is the two of diamonds. Very interesting river. I went from essentially turning my hand into a bluff to making a pretty strong value hand. Obviously still losing to a lot of the flushes, but I blocked the strongest combos. Pocket twos is now no longer in my opponent's range. He could still have a hand like queen deuce suited for a full house or pocket sixes, but I think it's very unlikely. I think it's much more likely that my opponent has a stronger queen here, especially with a spade or something like queen six suited. My opponent checks, and I'm not really sure what I was supposed to be betting here. I kind of go for a pretty weird bet size here and go really large for about pot. Kind of a hybrid bet where I expect to be called by some hands that block full houses, so something like queen six and possibly something like queen x with a very strong spade, so something like king of spades, queen x, and sometimes folding out some of his weaker flush draws. I think that this hand plays probably a lot better in theory than it does in practice as I don't really expect people to often be folding out weaker flushes. My opponent tanks for a very long time and ultimately they do make the fold so I'm not really sure what my opponent had. Kind of an interesting spot for me to raise and triple barrel here. I obviously block all of the strongest flushes and I think it's very unlikely my opponent has a full house. So really trying to get value from the really sicky queen x, but maybe this bet was a little bit ambitious. In this hand we see a hijack open to $80 from the comic king. He's been a little bit erratic at this point in the night. I look down at pocket eights in the cutoff and although he's been opening a slightly looser range, I think this is a pretty reasonable call still. And being in position, I do decide to call instead of three bet. Will in the small blind flats and the bad reg in the straddle decides to three bet to $400. The Comet King thinks for a little bit, makes the call, and I think eights is a pretty reasonable call, especially being this deep with the pot odds I'm getting and being in position. The small blind player also decides to call behind, and we go four ways to the flop with the pot at $1,600. The flop is the nine of hearts, two of diamonds, three of diamonds. Overall, a pretty reasonable flop for my hand. My opponents are going to have a lot of Broadway combos that do not connect with this board, and I think it's much more unlikely that they have a hand like pocket twos or pocket threes as far as pocket pairs go, so I'm pretty happy with pocket eights here overall. I also don't block any of the diamond draws, which is pretty good. The small blind player checks, the bad reg checks, the comic king checks in the hijack, and it gets to me in the cutoff. I decide that my hand benefits quite a bit from denial here. I expect them to be often betting their diamond draws, so I'm not necessarily denying against too much of that, but because they have a lot of those broadways, I really don't want players to see a turn card for free. I expect a lot of their 9x combos to be betting the flop and I can still get value from hands like pocket 7s, 6s, and 5s as well as something like ace 5 or ace 4 at some frequency. The small blind player quickly folds, the straddle calls, and the hijack decides to call as well. And we go to the turn with the pot at $2,800. The turn is the 6 of clubs. Overall, a pretty good turn card for my hand. A diamond hasn't come, an over card hasn't come. I would expect 4 or 5 to be betting at a slightly higher frequency than some of the other straight draws. Obviously that comes in and pocket 6s is a concern, but I'm much more happy to see this card than something like a ace or a 10 of diamonds, something like that. The straddle checks again and so does the hijack player and I decide to check behind. My thought process at this point is that I have filtered my opponents quite a bit already and my denial is not worth quite as much as I have pushed out a lot of those over cards. If my opponents do have a flush draw here, I don't expect them to fold and I don't necessarily want to be bloating the pot when they do have a stronger hand than me. I don't necessarily expect to get a ton of value if my opponent has something like pocket sevens. They could have pocket fives or fours that call again, but I think it's starting to get thin here, especially multi-way. 
The river card is the nine of clubs. A very good river card for me as a hand like 10-9 suited is now much more likely. Obviously I blocked the 9-8 suited combos, but overall some of the few hands that were a little bit stronger than me that still might be playing passively are now much less likely to be in my opponent's range. And when it checks down to me, I'm pretty sure we often have the best hand. My opponents might be checking something like pocket tens, but I'm pretty happy to check it down and try to win at showdown. The bad reg shows the ace queen of diamonds that he decided decided to slow play and play passively and the comic king had one of those weaker pocket pairs being pocket fives and i end up scooping this pot multi-way so very happy with this result very good sized pot for a hand that didn't really have a lot of aggression after the pre-flop action in this hand we have a middle position open to 80 dollars from will and the comic king three bets it to 225 dollars in the cutoff at this point in the session, the Comic King has been extremely active, so I expect him to be 3-betting a very wide range here. I look down at Ace-Jack Offsuit in the small blind, and I think facing a relatively wide middle position open followed by a very wide cutoff 3-bet, I think that Ace-Jack Offsuit is going to play as a pretty good 4-bet bluff, blocking the top of their range and having a ton of equity versus many of their hands. Will quickly folds and the Comic King makes the call. And we go heads up to the flop with the pot at $1,300. The flop is the four of hearts, nine of spades, two of diamonds. Pretty dry flop overall. Generally gonna be playing a lot of four bet spots as a small range bet. I continue here for a size of 550. A little bit larger, but we are deep. The Comic King thinks for a little bit and he makes the call. At this point, I expect him to be calling all of his pocket pairs, a lot of his ace high, especially with any back doors, but all of his ace king, ace queen, ace jack probably, as well as a lot of hands that do have good back doors. So something like king queen of spades, queen jack of diamonds, something like that, where he can pick up straight draw or flush draw equity on the turn, especially when he's in position facing this small bet. We go to the turn with the pot at $2,400 and the turn is the 9 of diamonds. I elect to check here. The 9 is a pretty bad card for me. I don't expect my range to have too many 9x combos and I expect my opponent to have a couple of 9x combos, especially when they are playing a pretty wide range. But more so, I don't expect my opponent to be folding any of their pocket pairs on this turn card. So I don't think I have a ton of fold equity. I would be trying to fold out some of those ace-king, ace-queen combos, which I'm also not sure he's folding, as well as folding out some hands that are a little bit worse than mine, like king-queen of spades. I also have the Jack of Diamonds, so I block some of my opponent's lighter continues. My opponent thinks for a little bit, and he bets a thousand. Kind of an interesting spot, as I don't expect my opponent to be betting here too often with some of their weaker pairs. So once he bets here, he becomes a little bit polarized. He's been very active at this point, so I do think I'm ahead of a decent amount of his range. So I elect to make the call and actually see the river. We go to the river with the pot at $4,400 and the river is the eight of hearts. Really doesn't change much unless my opponent has specifically pocket eights. It does make it so my opponent is much less likely to have a combo like 9-8. So at this point, there's very few 9x combos they have. It's really only ace-9, 10-9, and 9-8, I think. And there's only one combo of 9-8. And I also blocked the ace-9, so there's only one combo of ace-9. So there's very few value hands that my opponent does have here that they would like to bet. All of their pocket pairs should probably be just checking back here at a very high frequency. So I'm surprised when I check and my opponent decides to shove in for $3,850. At this point, he's basically saying that he has a 9x combo or he has something like pocket 4s, pocket deuces, or pocket 8s. I guess it's possible that he could have a hand like pocket jacks or pocket 10s as well. I don't know if he's going to be that aggressive with those hands though necessarily, but he might be at this point in the night. At this point, I'm heavily leaning towards call. My opponent has been shoving quite a bit at this point in a lot of spots and they have not had it. His value range is very narrow and I think that he's going to be continuing on flop with a lot of hands like ace high with any back doors or any broadways with back doors. And I think that all of those would probably be taking this line where they're shoving river. I'm not sure if he's shoving any of his weaker pocket pairs. I'm not sure he's shoving any of his like ace king, ace queen. So now all of a sudden it's tilted quite heavily towards bluffs. 
As I'm tanking, my opponent flips up the Jack of Spades, and at this point, I'm already leaning heavily towards call, but the Jack of Spades makes it so that my opponent really can't have any value hands here, as it's really only pocket jacks, especially when I have a Jack here, there's only one combo. It doesn't really make sense for him to have a hand like Jack-9, as I expect those to mostly be suited, so I make the call for 3850. My opponent shows the Jack-10 offsuit, where he decided to continue on the flop in position with the backdoor straight and the overcards and turn it into a bluff, and thankfully this hero call really works out as I scoop this 12k pot. The Joker recently just sat down at the table. He's a very fun player to play with, a lot of action. He loves to see flops, he loves to play big pots so it's gonna be a little chaotic from here on out. I immediately get a hand against his $40 straddle as I look down at pocket aces under the gun and open it up to $120. The bad reg calls on the button and we see a call from the small blind player and Joker decides to call in the straddle. I think when he's getting these pot odds multi-way he's pretty much gonna be calling any two cards. We go four ways to the flop with the pot at $500. The flop is the three of diamonds, eight of clubs, three of hearts. Overall, a pretty good flop for my hand as my opponents are not super likely to have too many 3x combos in their range. Joker definitely could, but I think it's unlikely that the button player or the small blind player have a 3x. I think any of the other players could have some number of 8x combos as well as a lot of pocket pairs. It checks to me and I decide to see bet for $200. Both the bad rag on the button and the small blind player make the fold, and Joker decides to call. I think his range consists of a lot of 8x here and weaker pocket pairs. I think if he has a 3x combo, I'm going to see a raise at a pretty high frequency, but it's definitely possible that he has a 3x combo here. I also think that he's going to float flop here with hands that have good back doors, so if he has something like ace 4 of clubs, I expect him to continue as well. But primarily, I think his range is going to be made up of 8x and smaller pocket pairs. The turn is the 7 of clubs. Pretty good turn for me overall, unless he has pocket 7s exactly. I think at this point, if he has decided to call flop with something with back doors, this does bring some of the backdoor draws in. So overall, a very good card for me. He checks, and I decide to bet pretty large here, and I bet $600, really trying to gain value against some of his pocket pairs and his 8x combos. He makes the call again. At this point, I think it's fairly unlikely that he does have a 3x combo. If he didn't raise on flop, I would have expected him to raise a high frequency on the turn. The river is unfortunately the 8 of spades, which I think is primarily the range that we are up against. Overall, probably the worst card in the entire deck, as I think it's much more likely my opponent has an 8x combo than a pocket pair or a backdoor flush draw. And if my opponent did make two pair, I'm still ahead of them with my aces and threes. My opponent checks, and I decide that this is one of the very few cards that I'm going to check back. Unfortunately, he does hit trips on the river, two outering me to one of the remaining eights, and my pocket aces gets cracked, and he scoops this $2,100 pot. In this hand, the joker opens it up to $100 on the button. I 3-bet ace-9 offsuit from the small blind. Not a position that I want to be making too many calls, and I think my ace-9 offsuit is ahead of a lot of his button opening range. He makes the call. We go to the flop with the pot at $820. The flop is the king of spades, nine of spades, two of diamonds, giving me middle pair with top kicker. Pretty happy with the flop overall. Obviously my opponent has a lot of king x combos, but I'm often ahead of most of their hands at this point. There's a ton of draws on this board, so I'm generally going to be playing my hand relatively passively, trying not to bloat the pot too much against hands that are already beating me like the king x, and trying to minimize the pot size a little bit, and allowing my opponent to bluff when they have a straight draw or a flush draw here. I check, and he decides to check back. When he checks back here, I think it's very unlikely that he has a king x combo. He could still have something like pocket tens, but I expect a lot of his stronger pocket pairs to be for betting me preflop. So I expect most of his check back range to be just random air, a worse 9x combo, or some pocket pairs. The turn is the 5 of hearts, which may give my opponent a pair and possibly an additional bit of equity with something like 7-6. I'm pretty sure that I'm ahead at this point though, and I think I wanna start getting a little bit of value from my hand. I don't expect to get raised too often, as I expect a lot of his flush draws and straight draws to be betting on the flop. I bet $550 here, a little bit on the large size, 
but I think that Joker likes to continue pretty wide, so I think I'm gonna get a lot more value here than I would in some spots. He makes the call, and we go to the river with the pot at $1,920. The river is the absolute gorgeous nine of diamonds, giving me trips with the best possible kicker. And at this point, I think I really wanna to try to get a ton of value from my opponent. I think that I can apply a lot of pressure on their pocket pairs that are going to be forced to hero call at some frequency with all the draws missing. And if he happens to have the last 9x combo in the deck, then I definitely want to get as much value as possible against that. I decide to overbet here pretty large and elect to bet $3,200 into this pot. He thinks for a little bit. He doesn't seem super thrilled with the bet, which is understandable as it is pretty sizable compared to the pot, but he does make the call. I show the ace nine offsuit for the river trips, and he shows me the nine of clubs for river trips with a worse kicker, and he mucks, and I scoop this 8.3k pot. In the final hand of the session, I get in another significant pot against the joker. In this hand, he opens it to 125 from the cutoff, I look down at pocket fours on the button, I make the call, and Cashman also decides to call in the small blind. We go three ways to the flop with the pot at $400. The flop is the jack of clubs, four of diamonds, 10 of hearts. At this point, I'm absolutely ecstatic to flop bottom set here. I'm very far ahead of my opponent's value range, and Joker really likes to continue pretty wide in general. It checks to him, and he bets $300 into this $400 pot. I think that I have a pretty easy raise here with pocket fours against him, and I bump it up to $1,200. Cashman folds, and Joker decides to continue. I think that Joker's range here is going to consist of pretty much any Jack X, a good portion of 10X, all of the over pairs. I think he's going to continue with all the Broadways, especially when they come with a straight draw. He's going to have a hand like 9-8, and I think he might even continue with a hand like Ace-9 or 8-7 of hearts that has double back doors here. We go to the turn with the pot at $2,800, and the turn is a complete brick, being the three of diamonds. He checks, and I think against the range that calls a check race, he's going to be continuing very frequently, and I decide to continue here for a very large sizing, and I bet 2k into this $2,800 pot. He quickly calls, and we go to the river with the pot at $6,800. The river is the king of hearts. Not my favorite river in the deck. Obviously, I would prefer a lower card that's like a blank, so something like the two of clubs or six of spades, something like that. I think that my opponent could have something like pocket kings here. But overall, I think it's still a pretty good card. I'm pretty happy with most runouts here, honestly, with a set. I think that if Joker does have something like ace king or king queen, he's going to be getting it in here. He also could have a hand like king jack or king 10 as well. So overall, pretty happy with this. He's never folding a hand like aces. Things get a little weird, though, as he decides to donk shove his remaining $5,500. Regardless, I think I have a pretty clear call here. I'm losing to some sets, and I'm losing to ace-queen, but I think that I'm going to hear from sets pretty frequently prior to the river, and I expect him to be shoving here with all of his top pair combos as well as his two pair combos. I quickly make the call, and I'm now playing an $18,000 pot, one of the biggest pots of my entire life. My emotions quickly go from ecstatic to absolutely heartbroken as my opponent flips over the ace-queen offsuit for the overcards and gutter that got there on the river, and unfortunately I lose one of the biggest pots in my entire life to a four outer when the king hits the river, and I end this session on a very sour note. As stated in the title, I had some less than ideal rivers and some very pivotal pots, and losing that 18k pot to end the session was absolutely devastating, and unfortunately I lost about 8.5k this session. That's just how it goes sometimes. Hopefully it's just a one of and I bounce back from this session. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I love interacting with you guys, and I'll see you guys in the future. Bye.